Hey friends, it's Kristen. For this week's craft, we are going to be making Pokemon terrariums. So if you'd like to make a habitat for two surprise Pokemon you'll be receiving in this kit, register online and keep watching to see the tutorial. The first thing we're going to do is get out our two Pokeball halves. And we are going to take either one of these, it doesn't matter which, and trace around the whole shape on here, including this tab. I'm going to show you on this one. You wanna make sure you go around this too. I left you enough for two, so in case something goes wrong, you've got extra. So trace that and cut it out. So you have a roundy with a bump. And that is gonna be the base for your terrarium. And the reason there's a tab on it is because when you first fit it in here, it's gonna be a little big you can sort of trim around the edges to make it fit the way you want. Every time, that just lets you pop it out without mashing it down and destroying your piece. That also helps if you're trying to fit it here, just make sure everything looks good inside the ball. It doesn't get sucked inside there and then you wind up having to start over again. So once you have this cut out, you're gonna wanna lay down some scrap paper or like a paper plate. Let me pull this one down. Okay. Put that down on here. What you're gonna do is plan out what type of environment you want. You could decide based on what Pokemon you get. You could have something already in mind. So I have this fantastic little Pikachu. But Given your supplies, you could choose a fire environment, you could choose a water one, just do a generic hangout spot. I think I'm going to do a little beach for this one. All right. So once you have your pattern figured out, you're going to go one element at a time. The easiest way to work is to go from front to back. So because I want to do a beach scene, I'm going to do the water first. So you're going to lay down glue. Where you want that to be. And if you put a little too much, you can sort of spread it like that. So I'm going to take my blue sand, so I'm going to use for water. Use your hand for this. You can use a spoon. You can even tilt the bag a little bit. Sort of sprinkle that over the coverage. We're going to let that dry about five minutes. And the reason we put this paper down is because we can just fold that up if I haven't shut my bag. Just fold that up. Sprinkle it right back in there so you don't lose any. You have lots left over depending on what you want to do. So once your five minutes is up, I'm just gonna gently tip that over. Left the loose down, you see. You have some left behind. And then you can kind of go from there. Like I like a little bit more water than that, so. Now this looks very thin, but this is just our base layer. So we're gonna go back and go over this once we've got the base layer down. So if you can still see through the cardboard, if it doesn't look the way you picture it in your head, don't stress right at this point. It's easy to add more. 
it's hard to take stuff off once it's glued down and you don't like it, so. Take it and get that. If your glue is giving you a hard time like mine is, you can also put it in a little cup and sort of scoop it on if you stick as you go. So my glue's had some time to dry, so I am gonna sprinkle that off in there. Take care of this. Doing it this way makes cleanup so much easier too. I'm really lazy about picking up after myself, so this is great for me. I'm gonna take some of my regular sand now. And I learned that my glue is kind of gross, so I'm just going to scoop it straight on. Oh, that's, that's, a, that's a lot of glue. <laughs> it's okay. If you get too much on and you spread it around and it's still way too much glue, you kind of just scoop it like that. Put it right back in the jar. You can leave it too, but just keep in mind it takes a lot longer to dry if you leave giant clumps on. I'm just going to use the top of my Pokeball as a sprinkle scoop. Now I've included two colors of sand and two kinds of moss to give you like a baseline of stuff to work with. But you can use whatever you want to decorate. If you want to find some small shells, you've got some cool, interesting little toys you want to put on there, you can absolutely use whatever you want in here. Now the sand is thin, so you're seeing it soaking up the glue and getting a little wet. Again, don't worry, this is basically just your base layer. So it's okay if this gets wet and gloppy because the glue dries clear, so you'll still be able to see the sand. And because it's the base layer, we're gonna put more stuff on top of it anyway. How do you think this is going, Pikachu? I can't tell if he's impressed or shocked. I'm going to choose to believe impressed. But because the sand, this sand is so fine, there's a lot less of it that comes off. I'll put the rest right back. Looking at how much I gave you and how much I'm actually using on here, you're going to have a lot extra. Which is cool. Hang on to this. You can make, just get some more cardboard, make some more bases, and you can switch out what's inside your Pokeball with the seasons if you want. Here's one I made earlier. Whoop, little river scene with some trees. If I get tired of that, I can just swap out my beach one in this ball. You can also make it double-sided once this is dry and make another scene on the side and flip it. So it will all store in the same Pokeball. I'm going to take this time to add more glue so I can get some more water up on here. Like I said, this dries clear, so you can put the other layer right over the top. Don't worry about it, because when it dries, you'll be able to see right through it, so you're not going to lose the layer you have below. 
before the temporarily has disappeared on us. If you do a thicker layer of glue like that, give it a little bit of longer to dry, like seven to 10 minutes. Otherwise it will still be gooey in the middle and when you go to work on the next layer, you wind up putting your finger in a big gob of glue and having to start all over again. My seam is pretty dry now. I'm gonna dump. Yeah, look at that. It's a nice thick layer of water now. What I tested out during the break, and what seems to be working really good, is taking some foil and rolling it up into the face of shapes you might like. So I rolled like some sand. I was trying to get a sand castle, but it's too small. But I have these nice little sand mounds like you'd make with a bucket with the foil, and then I just put it in the bag of sand and shook it. And I'm doing that a couple times to layer it up to make some little sand castles. So if you don't mind, do a little bit of sculpting. It comes in handy for big stuff. Look at that cute little sand castle. Do you like that? I think you do. We also have two different kinds of moss in here. We have Spanish moss and reindeer moss. And it's easy to tell the difference because Spanish moss is very dry. Oops. And reindeer moss is very moist and they look almost like trees when you unroll them. Or, in this case, seaweed. So I think I'm going to... Crumple some of these up small. Back with them. Now, if you want to check in on how this looks, anytime you want, you can just take the lid, put it over the top like that, make sure things fit. When the lid is closed, and check out. That's another good reason to have that cardboard tab. So I'm liking it okay. Set this down to dry. I actually don't like this as seaweed, so I'm going to peel that figure out something else to do with it. Let's see if this looks any better. And I think I'm going to dig that in my glue and start laying it out as like a little border. Yeah, I like that a lot better, so I am going to let that set for the while and then come back and work on the next one. So here is my dried and finished scene. And I went to test it out and thought, with the bubble over it, 
it looks pretty flat. So I'm going to show you how to add some trees if you want to do, add trees to this or do a forest scene. I'm just going to add trees to this. So remember earlier I said the reindeer moss looks a little bit like trees. It kind of looks like bamboo. Got these fuzzy little bushes here because I don't make shrubs. But if you want to turn them into trees, you can just pick them down individually off the clump and then just sort of prune the edges till you get a trunk looking the way you want it. The main thing with this is to figure out where you want it to go, but when you're doing that, remember that you're going to have a dome over the top, so test it out. You see that's way too tall, it's going to be laying down. So to shorten these, you just bend these backwards. Don't break them off, bend them, because we're going to use the bent part to help glue it into place. And the best way to glue this is with hot glue instead of white glue, because you want it to dry fast. White glue is just going to, it's going to slowly fall over. So just put a little dab of hot glue in a spot where you want to put a tree. And take that bent part. And glue down right on the bend. My popsicle stick. That's okay. And just sort of hold it. Now when they go in here single, they're gonna droop a little bit. Don't worry, you can add more glue when it's dry, which is very quick. And just pull that back on here and attach it to the glue back here to make it stand up. But what also happens is, as you add more trees, like I did here, as you glue them, the little branches hold onto each other, and they make a nice little forest where they're all standing up. So this is dried a little bit now. Let's see if he's standing up. Yeah. There we go, nice and upright. So you can add those, some of those in there, spread them out. Okay. Make a forest. And you're going to see a lot of glue around there if you're doing a multiple forest. The best thing to do to fix that is when you've got your forest the way you want it, take some of the Spanish moss, the dry stuff, crumple it in between your fingers or in another bag so you get like a powdered grass. That looks like that. And then you can just do another wear, layer of white glue and just sprinkle that grass all over the top. That's what I do with this one. I sprinkled it over the sand and I sprinkled it around the glue globs here. So now it just looks nice and thick and grassy instead of like a bunch of things stuck into glue. So while you're waiting for the rest of this to dry, you're gonna finish off the pokeballs. And to finish off your pokeballs, you're going to get your white foam, your black foam squares. The black foam, you're going to trace a quarter and cut out that one. And for your white squares, trace a penny and cut that out and put those to one side. And you are going to take both the top and bottom of the ball. And using glue, hot glue works best, but just do it in dots. Don't spread hot glue all around or it will melt it. Just do a spot of hot glue and stick. And then another spot of hot glue and stick there. And keep going all the way around. Until your top ball has this. It might be a little too long. Mine was, I had to trim mine. I'm gonna have to re-glue this part down. I trimmed too far. And then do the same with the bottom ball. Under the tab part. You don't want to get it up here or your ball won't seal shut. 
and just glue that in place with hot glue all around. And then take your two circles and on the bottom of the ball, on the opposite side of the tab, so this side, you're going to glue your black ball and then your white ball right on top of it. So you get your poke ball release button. And when this is dry, you're just going to gently insert it into here. You can hold it from the tab. Again, another great reason to keep the tab on there. So you don't accidentally mush off something you really like here when you're putting it together. You're going to have to push in a little gently because as you've added glue and sand and other things, you've made the rim of this bigger. So we're just going to squish that down in there as gently as you can. It is okay if stuff comes off. You can touch it up once it's inside of the ball. And if it won't, mine's being a little stubborn. If it won't go have some scissors handy pop it back out. Like it's mine, it's gotten a lot of sand here, so I'm going to trim that. Not a lot, just so the edges of the stuff comes off. You don't want to accidentally trim it and then have it too small, and then it just falls in the bottom of your ball. Oh, I hear it popping. That's usually good. Now mine is in there. I had to do a little bit of extra trimming. And then you once it's secure in where you want it, you cut your tab off. So you got a flat base all around. And do a test on that using your top to make sure your lid will fit over. Again, with the knobby piece in the back. I still have my hot glue gun on. Just make sure it's all good to seal up. And if that's the way you like it, Time to add your Pokemon. You to put them in there anywhere you want. You can glue them in place, or if you want to be able to move them around, you can leave them too. I have a Mantine, so I want him to make it look like he's jumping out, so I'm going to glue him on there so it looks like he's coming out sideways. So I'm just going to put a big old glob of glue there. That is why I love hot glue. Look at that. He is already secure. You have him jumping out sideways like he's leaping. I have this beautiful guy. Taking a walk on the beach. He is startled by a mantine. And let the glue set for a little bit before you put the lid on for the final time. Just all right, and there is my finished and closed Pokeball. I just gotta add my details. Once you do that, and it's all finished, pop it together. You can leave them lined up like this, but I find it's easier to do it a little crooked like that, because if you want to open it again, you just grab each tab and pop it. But when it is shut, there we go. And 
will look like that. And I'll be including a base in the kit. So you'll have a nice rest for it. So it won't be rolling all over it. But yeah, get creative. My Pikachu's fainting on the floor. Um, absolutely get creative with it. Tag us in what you've done. I really want to see what you come up with with these in your Pokemon. Make sure to register for your kit online. And I hope you all have a great summer.